2.30 in the morning. And I am tired. I'm tired. So tonight, what I'm gonna do is a uh, new target. Actually, really not tonight. I'm gonna do it at two o'clock in the morning. So I just figured I'd set up now. And so what I'm gonna do is shoot an area of the sky close to the Crescent Nebula that does have an NGC number. It's NGC 6914. And I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of how I set up and control a dedicated CMOS camera. So if you're a DSLR owner, like I used to be, and you're like, how do I do anything in astrophotography tool? How do I set it up? How do I start the cooling? Um, how do I do a sequencing program? How, how do I even take a picture with this thing? So we'll do that tonight. We'll get set up, we'll get polar line and um, I'll show you how to get this camera going and, and a sequencing program going. Might shoot a couple test shots on something fading in the West, you know, around Orion, just to do a little testing out tonight for you. And then uh, I'm gonna wake up at two and we're gonna look at a couple of uh, test subs that come in for some RGB, so hope you stick around. So looking over here at uh, the PC, um, this is basically astrophotography tool. This is my bread and butter. It's what I use all the time. And right now I've got the uh, camera set up in here. And uh, so the first thing I wanna do is come over here to the camera tab and get onto this uh, cooling aid, click it. I've got it set to minus 20 degrees. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start that. I like to move that over there. And then um, I've already got, uh, connection to my mount and I'm connected to the filter wheel so I could uh, you know change the filter you see me flaying a lot mosquitoes are horrible I'm in Florida so I've changed the filter uh, up here in this live view we can click it and it should be dark enough that we should start seeing uh, clouds <laughs> one thing I've noticed when you click on live view though and you go to the camera tab it automatically bends four by four so things are going to be real focused they're going to be bright but they're not going to be they're not going to be super focused so I like to go ahead and push that down to two by two I've got it set it on a three second exposure you see how it kind of cleared things up um, so basically it comes it seems to me it comes standard you can do from a one second to a 20 second exposure and I usually try to keep it on like a three second exposure if I'm uh, just trying to line something up for that uh, occasion. I'm gonna show you something I'm gonna set up here real quick just to show you guys what I do when it comes to shooting uh, RGB. I've noticed that when I shoot luminance, uh, red, green, and blue, 
Once I get focused, there's not a lot of difference between the, uh, the different filters. One of the experiences I had when I first started was I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna shoot all red and then I'm gonna get to this point and I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna shoot green. And then I'm gonna get to a point and I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna shoot blue. Ah, okay, that makes sense. I guess what happened uh, about three quarters of the way through that, the clouds came in. So I had a lot of red pictures. I had about half of my green pictures and then my rest of the half and my blue pictures were all crap. So at the end of the night, you know what I had? Nothing. I mean, I had uh, a bunch of images, but I couldn't produce an image. Over here, in, so what I did that has actually worked out pretty good is uh, I go over here to the camera tab, I go to edit, and let's just do a test setup. We're just gonna say add new light frames. Let's call this uh, NGC 6914. <laughs> And then I'm doing 240 second exposures. I'm gonna bend uh, one by one, and I'm gonna do a one second pause, and I'm gonna do a count of, let's just do a count of three. And then I'm gonna set my filter to two, which is the red. That's what I have my red filter set at is the number two filter. And I'm gonna say add as new. The first saying is a 240 second exposure, bend one by one, uh, one second pause. We're gonna do three of them, filter two. So if you click, uh, add is new you see i've duplicated it if i get on here and i change my filter to uh green and hit update current so now there's my red filter now my green filter so i'm going to shoot three on the red three on the green add is new all right and then i change my filter to the blue filter update current so you see i've set up like a little mini set here and then i repeat that so add is new and i go back to two update current add is new three update current Add as new, filter four, update current. So basically what I'm doing there is I'm shooting RGB, 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 RGB. And so let's say two thirds through the way I get clouds, but guess what? I've shot, I've shot an equal, or I've at least given myself a chance to shoot a red, a green, and a blue set to actually mix together if I just absolutely wanted to see something. I repeat that process over and over and over again until I get the desired amount of time. Uh, there's my next set. So I would do add as new, filter two, update current, add as new, filter three, update current, add as new, filter four, update current. So you can see right there, I've got basically four minute exposures. So 12 minutes uh, times each one of these. And I'm just repeating over and over and over again. Let's say maybe I get to this blue filter and I get a lot of clouds coming in. Well, guess what? I've still got an RGB set up here. I've done that several times, and so far I can't really tell that the focus is, uh, there's any issue there. Now, with narrowband, you can't do that. You can't shoot hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and try to do the same thing. Those are way different focal points. So once I've got enough time set in there, I click OK, and it populates this tab here. Um, let me do one more thing <clears throat> to show you guys. Go back in here to the Edit tab on this last one here. I'm going to click script or command. I'm going to click that. I'm going to go to this drop down list and I'm going to click next plan. So then it says, what is your next plan right here? And I created a plan in my light frame plan called park. It's a one second exposure, been one by one. It's just one, one, one across the board. It's a real quick exposure. But what happens is, is after that, it parks the scope. So if I come in here to this drop down list, it automatically brings up my light plans. Scroll down, I've got park, click it and click okay. And I say update current. And you'll notice right here by this ninth set here, there's a little comma. So when I click okay to that, you can see it popping up right there. That means at the end of this set right here, it's gonna shoot, it's gonna do that next plan shot, which is a one second shot. And then after that, it's gonna park the scope. Uh, so that's a great, uh, feature that astrophotography tool has. You can start seeing uh, some stars here. If we want to darken it up, we can just go to a two second exposure. And so basically that's it with these cameras. You know, it's, it's pretty much like the DSLR. When you're ready to start shooting, you uncheck live view, your start comes up, you click it, and it'll start running the uh, exposures just like your DSLR. Uh, this bottom little uh, info bar here that I have up here, it's basically your histogram. Um, I got it always on auto stretch. If I clear it, look at my image, it's dark. So if you get in here, you're like, what the heck, man? I can't see anything. You're gonna have to go into tools and histogram. So you click that on, this pops up. You gotta do this auto stretch left. When you do that, there's your image. You can see, you can see again. Let's let it get just a little bit darker. I'm gonna polar line. A little tool over here to probably the Flaming Star Nebula and see if uh, we can't grab a couple of hydrogen alpha images. 
All right, so we are polar line, and now we need to focus on our hydrogen alpha filter. So let's go here to gear. We're gonna go to objects. We're gonna pick a star in Orion, nice bright star. So we can pick uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And we click unpark, and then uh, go to. So we can hit live view here. Uh, let's go here to camera. Remember, it defaults to four by four. Let's do a three second exposure. So now we need to center ourselves. Now we see some stars there. So we're gonna go to gear, point craft, objects, Beetlejuice, okay. And then we wanna center an object and that is Beetlejuice, okay. And click uh, go to plus plus. There's our image. Let's see if it solves. If it doesn't solve, we will, uh... no, it's solved. Yeah. Exposure finished. So hopefully Beetlejuice will be, bam. Oh my God, it's like centered. Mm, 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 mm. Plate solving, I don't know, I wouldn't know how to do this without plate solving. Thank you, APT. All right, that was easy. Uh, so let's minimize that. And the first thing I want to do before I get the batten off mask out is I want to hit that sync button. And that uh, basically syncs them out to the night sky. And let's go in here to live view. Three second exposure. There we go. Now it's pretty small, right? Because um, we're shooting. Uh, actually, let's change our filter to the six. Filter Hydrogen alpha filter. That's the one we want to shoot right now. So, but over here in tools, you got a magnifier. When you click it and you drag it over, look at that. The other thing we can do to sharpen that up is come in here to our uh, camera tab. Oh yeah, it's been four by four. See, see, oh, look at that, sharper. Lock down the focuser. We're gonna get our batten off mask off. <laughs> okay, so now let's go find a target. Let's go here to camera. Let's go to edit and go in here to our light plan and do a new one. It's backspace. We're gonna do flaming star nebula. Um, let's do six minute exposures. Why not? 360 seconds. Bend one by one. Let's try to get 30 of them in there. Might as well. Filter six. Add as new. Uh, script command. We want to park it after that. Park. Okay. Update current and then okay. All right. So once we are done guiding or calibrating, we will uh, take a test shot. So let's see what we got here. Whoa, look at that. That's pretty freaking cool, man. That is, uh, that's real cool. <laughs> man, I wish I would've shot this one earlier with this camera. That's a cool target. All right, so there you go. Flaming Star Nebula and we're dithering. Exposure started. I'll see you guys back out here at uh, about 2.30 in the morning and we'll set up on the NGC 6914. Oh, let's go find it. You wanna go find it really quick? Let's minimize this. Let's jump over here to Stellarium, bump up here and do our search window. NGC 6914, there it is, search. Ah, it's in the grass. <laughs> there it is. So dig it, here's the Crescent Nebula. <clears throat> this is a uh, North American Nebula over here. So I was just tooling around and I happened to notice all this really cool stuff. So if we click my uh, Mead Series 6080 millimeter with my 0.8 times reducer, then that's pretty much the field of view. This thing's got, and it's got a reflection nebula in it too. If you zoom in here, we've got some reflection nebula, we've got a mission nebula, really awesome. All right, so that's it. So that's what we're going for in the morning. thing to talk right now i did get some sleep but i'm excited because it's super clear and that's what we need so over in the uh gear tab and objects i had to go look this one up so if you go into stellarium ngc uh, 6914 there it is so let's see how high it is <laughs> i'm gonna turn my landscape back on not very high but high enough all right so what i did go back in here to stellarium is uh I find these areas like that it's pretty much centered on that reflection nebula and then the uh, on date uh, right ascension and declination coordinates i just uh i took a picture of those on my phone 
and then I come over to the custom tab and I enter it in. So it should be the last one and we're gonna click okay. Right, unpark the scope and you go to. All right, so we have to find a star to focus on first. Let's go back in here to Stellarium. I don't know my stars yet. Still getting to know my stars. Um, but I can see Vega, go to Vega. Uh, let's go back in here to gear, objects, uh, stars. Scroll down to Vega, I'll click OK. So I'm gonna change the filter to filter two. Shoot, it's right there. It's right there. So probably good enough. Let's get the Batten off mask on. We can do our tools and our magnifier. Because it's so bright and I want this uh, star spike to be super focused or small as can be so I can really see it, I'm gonna bend it one by one. I gotta take that little spike right there and move it over uh, to the right. Good. We'll lock it down. Don't forget to take the batten off mask off. It's a wonderful thing until you leave it on. This sucks. All right, so now let's go back to gear, objects, custom. 6914, okay, go to point craft, object that we're gonna find, and then the object that we're gonna center, go to plus plus. So it solved it, which is cool, it's slowing. And the little arrow, I put it with my mouse, not my finger, basically tells you which way it's moving the scope to, uh, to center your target. It's kinda handy to know. Exposure finished. Even though it's pretty low, we got some, got some good stars. It's good. Go to plus plus finished. Cool, synced up. <laughs> All right, so we're guiding. Uh, so let's come back in here to camera, edit. Let's look at that. Uh, I think we already did it earlier. Let's see if it saved it. And I think I'm going to adjust this to bend two by two. That'll give me a little bit brighter image. Uh, won't be as crisp, but that's what my HA data is for. So I'm still gonna do that. I'm gonna say update current. And unfortunately, I have to go through and change every one of these. Okay, so I've changed them all. And one thing I wanna do is I wanna add another row. So I'm gonna, I'm also going to take out this next plan script and hit update current because I don't want next plan on number nine. Uh, so now that I've done that, I'll hit add as new. Okay, so we are shooting uh, four minutes. So let's get our handy dandy little calculator out here and see roughly how long that's gonna be. That'd be another cool thing is if uh, in APT, if, you, if you're IVO and you're listening and you're watching this, uh, when you're just typing in a command, it'd be nice to have a, a like an area in here or somewhere down here that would tell you, wait, it does. <laughs> it does. Uh, it says uh, 147 minutes. All right, so we're getting close, 10 seconds. See what we can see. That's a. Uh, that's pretty cloudy, but you can see it in there. Okay, so that kind of shows you like there's so much stuff in this, and obviously the contrast will get better because I'm shooting like <laughs> super low, uh, and hopefully have a pretty cool picture uh, at the end of this video to show you. All right, well that's it. I'm going back to bed, people. I'm tired. This this uh whole quarantine thing has brought on the clear skies we've had consecutively in forever. So between the stress and the clear skies, I'm beat. <laughs> I don't know if you're watching this and it's cloudy, you're like, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. All right, clear skies.